What do we look for in our heroes? Strength? Mystique? Quality facial hair? What aspects should they embody? Fair treatment of others? Journalistic integrity? A willingness to go without water for inordinate periods of time? In world-famous explorer and alleged war criminal Bruce Nyquil, we see at least two of those qualities. Tonight, on 60 Minutes, we go under the fedora for the Bruce Nyquil story. I've been doing nature photography lately. I've got a deal with National Geographic to do a photo series in May. I'm thinking of calling it VA Garbage. Fascinating. But Bruce, I have to ask, what led you to this point? Well, Simon. My name's not Simon. It is now. As I was saying, it all goes back to the day I was born. The year was a year. The month sure was one, and the day just like any other. Do you have a specific date? That's classified information. In any case, the day I was born, I set the records in the hospital. People came from all over just to see me. I tell you, my parents feared that all the flame would go to my soft little baby head, but I had a plan. A plan for what? To escape, you see. I already knew that to reach my full potential, I'd have to be on my own as soon as possible. So I fought my way out of the maternity ward with nothing but a baby bottle and a stethoscope. And from there, I uh, made my way to the outback, where I learned the ways of the room. So, Adam. Uh, I prefer to go by Ad, actually. Sorry. Uh, Ad, when was it first apparent to you that Bruce was different than the average Australian college student? Probably when he hopped out of a kangaroo pouch on a first day of uni. Bruce was the best damn beer pong player at uni. I mean, crikey, we went to nationals thanks to his skills. I remember Nationals. Uh, I used it as a cover to infiltrate the Canberra Beer Company and expose them for their shady business practices. That was my first taste of the international journalism ring. Received this year from Will Ferrell after I saved him from a band of Guatemalan pirates. Uh, swell fellas. The pirates, I mean, though, not Will Ferrell. Got this little beauty after I uh, broke the curse of Amy Mora and uh, put the ghosts to rest. If you listen carefully, you can still hear the spirits trying to escape. This here is my 11th Lifetime Achievement Award in Journalism. And uh, over here we've got my water supply, uh, just in case we're ever to be trapped in here for more than a week straight. Of course, I can rely on my internal water reserves if I'm ever pressed in such a, such a situation. Uh, however, um, uh, if it really gets dire, I can draw water from the atmosphere through my skin. Like a frog, I've mastered osmosis. Which award means the most to you? The one award I can't have. A son who loves me. So, Ad, as Bruce's best friend, what's his relationship with his son like? Uh, he didn't talk about him much. Bruce was uh, too busy exposing rings of corrupt politicians and dodging poacher bullets in sub-Saharan Africa that he missed most of his childhood. What was his name? Bryce. Bryce Dayquil. Can you talk about your relationship with your dad? I guess I never really knew my father. I mean, I knew him from TVs and magazines, but I understand he was out adventuring, and I don't blame him. But I just wish I knew him a little better. Bryce? Dad? Bryce, I'm so sorry. The elephants! I, I, I know. You need to ride the elephants into battle to fight the emus. I, I see you've... You've grown up, and uh, you're just destined for so much more than this. You think so? What am I supposed to do? How do, how do I follow in your footsteps? Let's find your own way. But I have faith in you, because you're a NyQuil. So what will you do now? I think I'll head west. It's time to forge my own path. Time to Tasmanian my own devil. Time to out my own back. Time to bloom in my own onion. Time to platy my puss. I think it's time to work on the accent. 